Mortal Kombat 1 acts as a soft reboot for the franchise. It has an entirely new story mode in a new era. This features a lot of familiar faces but with tons of key differences. Costing just £30 this game promises an unforgettable reboot from the original. So let's jump right in. Firstly we pulled this out of his wrapping but we will not reveal the insides because it has a redemption code but the CD is in there. A lot of fans are skeptical with any big project such as this. The chances of ruining the identity of iconic characters is very high. Fortunately this isn't the case here. Mortal Kombat 1 hits a home run and makes some incredible changes which change the franchise for the better. Baraka has always been a mindless cannon. He has served as a punch bag for the good guys. Now it's different. He gets his own story chapter. He gets to have interactions and forge bonds with the likes of Reptile, Ashra and Kenshi. His combat is as fun as always and he gets to beat up a bunch of bad guys while players get to see what his origin and motivations are. Raiden gets to be a sort of plucky underdog chosen one, while also showing some sass in his dynamic with Kung Lao and even with the Deadly Alliance. Kung Lao, instead of being annoying, is now more funny and his dynamic with the Earth Realm champions is fun to see. Both of these characters feel like a breath of fresh air. Liang has been Sub-Zero for a while. This has altered Sub-Zero's perception into this honourable warrior that doesn't compromise on his principles. Bihan has basically been noob cyborg for a decade, a typical bad guy. This game flips the switch. Bihan is Sub-Zero and Liang is Scorpion. There's no fiery spirit of vengeance in the shape of Hanzo Hasashi in this game. Liang Scorpion is calm, determined and sticks strictly by his own core values. He is loyal to his family and extremely powerful. Some of the best scenes in the story involve him. On the other hand, seeing a more moral Sub-Zero is super fun. Bihan is allowed to shine as the leader of the clan and faces some extremely difficult decisions. Players have been hoping for a return of Havoc ever since he stole the show in the comics. His redesign is fantastic with lots of brutal combos and stupid amounts of gore. While he has a mere tertiary role in the game's story, certain parts from characters' intros and tower endings allude more to the Order Realm and Havoc's slow descent to darkness. What makes matters more interesting is the tease in the end of the game story which sets Havoc up as an important character for any future story expansion packs. Neither realm have a chance to craft another iconic villain and a maniac like Havoc would be perfect if things go the way they have been hinting. Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat 1 might be his best version yet. He's a vital part of the story and he's back to his goofball self. Johnny has a very fun character in the game. His interactions with Liu Kang, the ninjas, Kenshi and pretty much everyone else are all hilarious. What really shines though is his relationship with Kenshi. Starting off as grumpy rivals fighting over an important weapon, they quickly form a brotherly bond. Their interactions in the second act of the story were handled exceptionally. They both get some key character defining moments which intersect with one another too. Safe to say this is quickly going to become one of the best bromances in fighting games. With these new character changes, it certainly makes Mortal Kombat 1 a more desirable game. But is this what all gamers would like or is the whole story just getting a bit too boring and old now? Maybe a reboot is not what was needed but we certainly believe that character interactions is the future for shaping games such as this. This is the unboxing beard and we just unboxed Mortal Kombat 1 for the PS5.